The primary conclusion we've drawn is that the modern dating scene is, to put it gently, a disaster zone, a toxic waste dump. Uh, I don't want to be overly negative or discouraging about it, but it is an unmitigated disaster. Well, you, <laughs> you can't disagree with that, can you? I quite like the humor as well. It's, I don't want to be negative, but it is a toxic waste dump. You know, I think he compares it to Chernobyl now. It's a radioactive meltdown. It's the, uh, you know... <laughs> It's like he's looked into my own personal diary. It's like he's looked. It's like he's 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 looked into my own personal dating life, and he's just recounting that. Sort of the dating equivalent of Chernobyl, and if it's pr pretty much, that was not already clear enough. Tinder has, according to an article in the New York Post, released their annual year in swipe report. It tells us that uh, this tells us about the state of the date, as they're calling it, according to one of the biggest and worst dating apps in the world, and the results are pretty bleak. So here's what the report says. Quote, young singles are no longer doggedly pursuing their happily ever after, new data has revealed. According to Tinder's annual year and swipe, which shares the state of the date in 2023, singles are less concerned about where their relationships are headed and more interested in creating opportunities to have new memorable experiences. <laughs> yes, I, I mean, there's a, a lot of sort of euphemism at play here, isn't there? New memorable experiences i mean what what are they that they, they basically mean banging don't they that's what kind of what it, what they mean they mean having sex right that's that's what it all boils down to and we get an interesting quote from the um the chief marketing officer in a moment and again there's a lot of sort of obf obfuscation there and a lot of sort of nuance and subtlety and everything and and, and and basically what it's saying is that gen z are just banging like rabbits or at least the, the good looking ones are anyway this year in particular marked a major shift where the journey is more important than the outcome Tinder chief marketing officer, Melissa Hobley, said, quote, this new generation of daters is showing us what it means to date for the possibilities, freeing themselves from traditional expectations, allowing them to write their own worthwhile stories. Yeah, I mean, look, I would, um, I imagine that Matt is, 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 is not a fan of how she's couched that in prose, and I would have to concur with him. I think that is incredibly hokey, and it's kind of cringe the way that she, she's written that. I mean, basically what she's saying is Gen Z love to bang around. They're not too bothered about finding Mr. Right. They just want to find Mr. Right now, and to hell with the consequences. That's kind of what she's saying, but she's kind of making it sort of ameliorating it and making it sound nicer than it, than it is. Um, now, when we drill down further into this, probably what's going to happen is that we're going to see that actually... It's not that all Gen Z are banging around at all. It's just that there's a small tier on the top level who are getting all the action, particularly the guys, right? You know, the top 20% of the guys are getting all of the, the play and the rest of the guys are getting nothing. So we're, you know, I would imagine if we draw down further into this data, which I haven't yet had time to do, we're going to see that the, the haves and the have-nots, uh, the, the gulf between them is getting even bigger. But anyway, that's for another show. Basically, what she's saying is that they're, they're at it like rabbits. Gen Z, uh, Tinder Australia spokesperson, Christy, uh, Kirsty Dunn agreed, continue to usher a renaissance in dating, and this generation is certainly st straying away from labels and the more traditional expectations. So, I mean, as I was saying earlier, you can see why now the people at AmFest 2023, Charlie Kirk, that Benny Johnson guy, uh, Officer Tatum, and uh, Tucker Carlson also uh, had a quote that was sort of along similar lines, basically just, you know, get married, settle down, having a family. Is the, he, uh, um, Tucker Carlson repeated the often said thing, which is that the only purpose of life is to, is to procreate, basically to reproduce, which, to which I always respond, well, on a species level, yes, that is the point of, uh, we're a human species, right? We're a species there's no other raison d'etre for us being here other than to replicate ourselves, right? Survival and replication. So that is true on the level of the species. Whether that's true for the individual in your own life, though, is another question, okay? Because I am not the species, all right? Yes, I'm part of the species, but I don't represent the entire species. I may choose to make different decisions in my own life, and that's my business, okay? Um, but anyway, so Tucker Carlson came out with that. And the reason that they're, they're all banging this drum and they're banging it so loudly is because of this stuff. Actually, if your objective, and as a conservative, as an alt-right kind of conservative figure or platform, your objective is to say to people, no, you should get married, family values, et cetera, et cetera, then this Tinder data shows us that that is going very badly wrong. 
So I, you, they would say, well, it's societal pressure. I mean, perhaps it is. I, I don't know. But certainly, regardless, what's actually happening is that the populace or Gen Z are going even further from what Charlie Kirk or probably Matt Walsh or any of these dudes would, would recommend. They're just going more into degeneracy. And the, these conservatives are there clutching their pearls going, oh, my God, no, please get married. Just find any woman and marry her and then have more kids than you can afford, you bastards. You know, they're just going hell for leather because they're clearly losing the, the, the rhetorical argument here, right? They're, cle- they're clearly on the wrong side of this, not the wrong side, but they're clearly not winning this particular debate. They're not drawing people into their camp, apart from those few hundred people who were at the event. Quote, uh, 69% of young singles agree that dating standards need refreshing to fit a more modern and diverse society. Now, I mean, what does that even mean? I, uh... This um, modern and diverse approach to dating has a clever little acronym to go with it, and that acronym is NATO. <laughs> oh. To any military buffs, no, it does not stand for North Atlantic Treaty Organization, at least in the context of modern love. Instead, it's an acronym for not attached to an outcome, an approach to dating that's been embraced by Gen Z this year and helps open up the possibilities of any and all connections instead of being fixated on a specific end game. Now, quick side note. So uh, I was saying on Twitter earlier, I think my, my entire dating history for the past like 25 years has basically been NATO. It's basically not attached to any outcome. I basically ca- I've, been, I've been holding up the NATO party line since the 90s and I continue to do so. But obviously for the likes of Matt Walsh and all these people, that is a, is a very, very bad thing. And he's going to explain why now. Is yet another sign of how low the bar has, uh, has gone in society that you can call yourself a military buff if you simply know what NATO is. <laughs> he's, he's got a point, hasn't he? But uh, I digress. Continuing, users are not looking for anything. They're not pursuing, uh, they're not putting pressures on themselves or others by setting that expectation of only looking for a relationship or only looking for something casual, she said. It's very much in line with what we've been seeing over the last couple of years, particularly last year, as situationships become increasingly more prevalent. They're focused on getting to know someone, being in the present, and living in the moment. They're leaving it open-ended so that they can explore whatever path they want, which can be quite freeing and liberating. Now, in other words, apparently now there are two different types of NATO that need to be disbanded. Now, granted, um, you know, I never know with these kinds of articles whether they're just inventing these buzzwords and acronyms on the spot. I find it somewhat hard to believe that any actual 22-year-old woman is out on a date saying, you know, uh, I take more of a NATO approach. <laughs> but whether the acronym was invented by the media or not, the approach that it describes is certainly very real and very common and, and very, very wrong. An open-ended approach to dating, where there's no end goal or purpose or intention in mind, is a bad idea for much the same reason that it's a bad idea to take the approach like that to anything in life. You know, platitudes about living in the moment and being in the present, um, they may seem appealing if you're kind of stupid, but intelligent people know that you, you have to have some idea about where you're going in each present moment and why. Yeah, kind of. But, and he does go on to point this out in a moment the issue with dating or getting into relationships whatever you you know whatever it is um is that it takes two to tango at least two maybe it takes more if you're destiny and melina but it at least takes two to tango okay and so you 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 can't it is not advisable to go into a bilateral negotiation which you might say the dating process is um with only one fixed outcome. Like, there needs to be some degree of flexibility there, okay? Um, because you don't know what objections the other party is going to throw up. Sorry, this is all getting very theoretical now. What I basically mean is, um, if I... First, all right, put it like this, right? So, from a dating coach perspective, we always advise clients not to go in and basically say, hey, yeah, you know, I'm looking to get married in five years. What are your life goals? Blah, blah, blah. Because when you do that... As a guy, when you're going on a date with a woman, often women can get put off by that because effectively you're putting out all your cards on the table, um, you know, from, from day one, which is is not a very attractive way to come across. It is better actually to be a little bit more mysterious and a little bit more aloof and, you know, and also take some time to assess her as well because here's the other thing, okay? Like what Matt is basically saying, I think, is go out with the intention of 
finding someone to marry, okay? And he does go on to strengthen that point in a moment. Fine, but you, like, you, you can't really... <sighs> you need to kind of get to know the person a bit. Like, I, w I don't want to sit down on a first date with a woman I've never met before, and basically I'm interviewing her for the position of my wife. That just seems like a ridiculous thing to do. What I want to do instead is to spend time with her, maybe not with an outcome in mind as such, like these NATO kids are saying, and, and kind of see where it goes and kind of see what her behavior is like over time, see how she responds to me, see how, you know, we, ha we come up against challenges. D there are difficulties that arise. How does she respond? How does she act? How does she act with me? What's her vibe like? What's our chemistry like together? Okay. And then over time, you can make a decision on that person whether, okay, this is going to be something more casual or this is not going to be casual and actually we're going to make this into a long-term thing even a marriage okay but i do think you know if you go into the day particularly as a guy and you're like right are you are you are you the future mrs troy francis i think that's a very very bad way to go at it and in the modern dating scene unfortunately a lot of women are just gonna gonna bin you off and ghost you because they will think you're too needy they'll think you're you know you it, it's just not gonna fly unless you're i don't know going to some pentecostal church or something like that may, maybe this is the case again no matter what you happen to be doing, even if you're just taking a walk around the neighborhood, you need to know where you're going. <clears throat> the difference between an enjoyable stroll and getting horribly lost and then ending up getting stabbed in the chest when you wander down the wrong back alley is simply knowing where you're going. That's the difference. You don't have to have every step planned out. Well, I don't want to be pedantic, Matt, but you could know exactly where you're going and still get stabbed down a back alley. I mean, you should come around here, man. This is East London. I mean, you could, I know exactly where I'm going and, you know, I, I'll probably get stabbed when I leave the office today. I mean, that's just how it, that's just how it goes in these ends. You can and should be prepared to change course if need be. Mm. But you need to have a direction, a purpose, a sense of where you want to end up. Going for a hike in the woods is fun, but if you're living in the moment the entire time and keeping things open-ended with no idea where you want to go or where you should go or what direction you ought to be heading, then it will become progressively less fun until eventually you're completely lost and you die alone of starvation and hypothermia. And that's basically how the dating scene works, more or less. <laughs> dating is not an exception to the general principle that you should always have a reason and a purpose behind your actions, um, rather than just kind of ambling around aimlessly and blindly, uh, you know, sort of bumping into things like some sort of malfunctioning Roomba. Well, um, actually, that, not that, only that's kind of how I've... Uh... <laughs> that's kind of how I've uh, directed my own dating life for the past 20 years. So, uh, yeah. Dating, not an exception to that. But it's been a lot of fun. But it is, if anything, the very best example of it. Because before you venture warily into the dating scene, you should be able to answer some basic questions. Like, one, why am I doing this? Well, maybe you want to get laid. Two, what do I hope to achieve? Sexual satiation. Three, where do I want this to go? Uh, the travel lodge on Euston Road. And again, those are questions you should be able to answer no matter what you happen to be doing in any given moment. And if you cannot answer any of those questions about dating, then you just shouldn't be dating. You probably shouldn't even be driving. <laughs> like you are so indecisive and apathetic as to barely quant... quant I think there's a little bit of a sort of... <sighs> I suspect that what's actually happening here is that he is taking this, the, the wording that they've used in this Tinder report somewhat too, too literally, okay? Because I think the reality is, and again, look, this is, this is kind of just me spitballing here, so you might disagree, but I think the, probably the reality is that actually most people who were questioned for, for whatever study they did for, t for that Tinder report probably most people actually do have a pretty good idea what they want as the end goal. You, you know, like a lot of women that I've interacted with, you know, a lot of women I've dated and stuff, they have, they've kind of known, yes, at some point, I would like to have kids, I would like to have a family, okay? That is there in the back of their mind, okay? So it's not that they're just wandering blindly, like he's implying, just like sort of stumbling around and not having any sort of clue at all to the final destination. I think a lot of, um, as I say, women, I think probably a lot of men as well, although maybe with men it's, can be slightly different but i think most of us do have some sort of idea where we would like to to end up you know and, and with a lot of people actually and this is the good news for the trad cons actually still for a lot of people that is in some form of committed relationship and it is having a family okay and i think most people do actually know that in the back of their head however you know dating is not this one and done process where it's like you, you know you go down to the go down to the local local 
plumbing store to buy a new sink or something and then you you know you, you look at a couple and they go all right this is this is the one i'll take it i mean dating is a much more nuanced and complex process than that because it's a process of getting to know somebody and it's it, it also should be a process of getting to know somebody frankly over a period of time you know like for guys i would say you know really you you want to be with her for a minimum of a, of a year really before you make things serious and um <clears throat> probably even more than that. I certainly would have moved in with somebody for, you know, in any, any less than at least 12 months. Um, Cause you've got to vet them. You've got to figure out, okay, is this actually somebody that I want to get into that sort of a close domestic relationship with, or are they just a bit insane? And I, I should be running for, from the hill for the hills, you know? Um, and again, this is why this kind of trad cod advice is, is, is dangerous because it, there, there doesn't really, there isn't much emphasis on vetting. There isn't much emphasis on, well, hang on a minute, man. Just, just, just go slowly here. Just, just you're making a huge, huge commitment. Getting married or getting into a long-term relationship. So just, you know, take your time, figure things out, make sure that you're with with the right person. I mean, to be fair to Matt, I think he has said those kinds of things in different videos. But some of these people at the the Amfest thing, I mean, none of that nuance. It was just no, find her, marry her. That's it. Um, and and that's just not a good way to operate. So actually, this whole NATO thing, it sounds flaky. It sounds stupid. It's a stupid buzzword that they've just basically made up, you know. But um, in fact, actually, that really is probably how dating does operate and probably should operate. Because, yes, your, your, your meta plan might be, yes, I would like to find somebody. I would like to get married. I would like to have a family. But then there's the micro side of things, which is, okay, but is it going to be with this person or is it going to be with that person? And, of course, these people completely take any sort of the pleasure of any kind of casual sex out of the equation totally. That's just completely verboten, right? That, that, that shouldn't come into it at all. This is only about finding a life partner and that's it. Um, and, and, and really, you know, he may hold that view and that's fine, but really that's counter to, to human nature. And that's why we're seeing this kind of hookup culture proliferating in the Gen Z uh, segment. Qualify as sentient. And if you wander out into the dating world like that, it's guaranteed that either you'll end up feeling used and manipulated and heartbroken, or the person you date will end up feeling that way. Well, he's obviously never been to Miami. Because Both of you will. But there is zero chance of a good outcome. That's the way life works. If you're vacillating too much to pursue a specific out outcome, then life will pick an outcome for you. And it won't be one that you like. Because there's going to be an outcome one way or another. You could either have one in mind that you're chasing down, or you could just let chance decide for you. And again, usually when chance decides, uh, it's not going to be in your favor. Mm, yeah, well, as I say, I think, there's a, a, I think there's a meta and a micro level with this stuff. I suspect that a lot of people do have the, the meta level kind of figured out to some extent. I mean, not everybody, but they, they kind of, I think there's, because most people, let's be honest, the biological drive is toward pair bonding and it is towards having a family. Okay, so, so most people probably do have that as their final goal, okay? There are outliers, of course. There are perpetual playboys, etc. But a lot of people do have that as the goal. But, you know, you can't go out onto the modern dating scene and just kind of, like, go out every, on every single day, every single interaction, as if you're auditioning that person to be the potential future partner, the potential future husband or wife. Aside, apart from anything else, because it's an enormous turnoff and it doesn't work as a dating strategy, okay? It really doesn't. Women in particular get very turned off by guys who seem to be too needy, who seem to be chasing them too much, who seem to want too much too soon, okay? Why? Because, you know, men really actually value freedom or should at least value freedom more than they do domesticity if a guy is too willing to proffer his his wrists up to put on the handcuffs cuffs of domesticity just because she's cute or she's got a nice butt or whatever um that's a very very bad situation to be in okay so um that's not gonna be a turn on for her she's not gonna like that and yeah man you've you've got to um you've got to be careful about the way you present yourself if you want to maintain you know, these women's attraction. So 